Hey everybody, Ed here with the Digital Digest, and today I wanted to give you guys an update on my experience with the Toshiba Excite 13. So this is the Digitally Digested segment. Going to give you a full review of this product. You're looking at the 32 gig Wi-Fi version, priced at $650. The 64 gig version is priced at $750. So really pricey, obviously, a lot of different options at this price point. And if you're looking for a 13 inch tablet, well, this is the only one. So nothing else like it, that's for sure. And it does perform relatively well and I'll tell you guys right out of the gate before I get down to showing you performance across the board from you know flash playback to gaming to browsing and talk about just the actual uh, usefulness of a device like this I can tell you guys right now the tablets made really well much like the uh, you know its siblings the Excite lineup of set the 77 and the 10 although I do have to say the 77 is my favorite in the lineup the point is the tablets made really well the internals are all top of the line even with the Nexus 7 now being out and offering a really budget oriented high performance machine there is still a place for this just not at its price point so I want to get that out of the way up front with that said let's go ahead and uh, do a little video playback here. Of course, the great Tegra 3 processor, that 4 plus 1, you know, the extra core for uh, battery preservation. The Gorilla Glass, the aluminum back cover, which many continue to say is plastic, as I mentioned in the 7.7 uh, unboxing. You've also got that SRS uh, premium audio, audio uh, package with the stereo speakers that are on board here. That full-size card slot uh, for storage expansion that I mentioned before, as well as micro HDMI and USB ports mentioned those earlier as well the dual HD cameras both on the front and the rear and then of course the all right so I'm gonna stop it there because you know that was actually perfect in terms of this way you guys know the specs I mean that that is what this tablet has to offer Toshiba knew what they established with the Thrive lineup you know all of that functionality but not so much of an emphasis on form and the Excite lineup corrected that they brought the best of both worlds together you got a beautiful tablet whether you're going with the 7.7 the 10 or the 13 and you still have all of the ports and functionality although of course the 7.7 doesn't have uh, the full range of ports that this and the 10 have to offer. It does at least make up for that with its Super AMOLED display, which knocks everything out of the market. But as you can see here, performance on flash playback, uh, obviously what you'd expect from a Tegra 3 device. I think you guys, it should come through in the video that the display is really good. Uh, only thing I could say is I wish it wasn't so reflective, but after all, there are no tablets made uh, really with matte finishes anymore because it's easier on the eyes for uh, web browsing and text to have that reflective display, although not necessarily ideal for all users. Uh, the audio performance really strong and that should come across in this video because after all with a tablet being this large, you know, 2.2 pounds, 13 inch display, it better have best in class audio since it's the only in its class and it does have good sound. Uh, was I blown away by it? No, but certainly it's definitely, uh, it lives up to the size of the tablet. Had they not done as well as this, it would have been a weak offering to say the least, considering the footprint that this 13 inch tablet, you know, carries with it. So really full featured, good performer. Let's go ahead and jump to some web browsing. And, uh, you know, basically what I'll do here is show you guys general performance as the keyboard catches up with me and as you can see the keyboard really large obviously I'm nowhere near my router by the way as usual and performance is still going to be fairly solid as you see right now uh, color reproduction I do like the cool tone this calibration the auto bright display as Toshiba has dubbed it I do like what I see here a little mispress there touch by me pretty smooth you know if I was on Chrome this would be butter uh, but of course Chrome has no flash so I'm not even demoing Chrome there's no point really to do so I think everyone knows Chrome is the best mobile browser on the market so you know overall I'm happy with the performance here it mirrors what you find on the Excite 10 and the 7.7 of course in a completely different format and so with that footprint in mind I want to show you guys the stand of course this is what is included it allows you to stand the tablet up upright for uh, browsing the web, viewing movies, you know, general media consumption, and then if you flip it around, you can lay the tablet down for a productivity mode where you're able to type with that really spacious, large, uh, you know, keyboard that you just saw a moment ago. So browsing, definitely a good experience here. I can say that's one of the areas where you're just, you're blown away. It's just not comparable 
to a 7, a 7.7 or a 10 inch tablet. I mean, if I bring in the Nexus right here, you just get an idea of really how large this display is. The Nexus being a 7 inch tablet, obviously there is some uh, bezel there on the Nexus, there is also here, but this equates to about three of the Nexus tablets at least, uh, you know, it seems from what I just was showing you guys. So. Uh, there's no question, a completely different experience, and I have to say this reminds me of the all-in-one touchscreen PCs that have been floating around the market for many years now and never made it. Obviously, this is a much more intelligent way to go because it's much more practical and you can actually take it somewhere. Not that you'd want to, but if you, you know, did decide to take it out of the house or use it on a road trip for the kids, mount it in the back of a minivan, large minivan SUV, I could see it being a really practical, uh, good device for that type of portability uh, and, uh, you know, mobility use from that standpoint. In terms of home use, you're going to want to use a stand. This is really a secondary computing experience. Uh, you know, a, an example I could throw out there for you guys is that if you have it mounted next to your uh, home display, like I've got that, uh, you know, my 27-inch display, if I have this next to it running Gmail uh, or another application where I want, you know, just instant access to that dedicated feature, that it's great for that. Uh, there are a lot of different uh, specific marketplaces that this is going to do well with. The average user, though, is still going gravita to gravitate towards that 10-inch model. Uh, in my opinion, the 7.7 is the best of the group. In my opinion, that's the best tablet on the market right now, even better than the uh, Transformer in many ways. But the Transformer does offer the best overall package, and that's why it is the most popular tablet on the market. Of course, the Nexus 7 is going to change all of that, in my opinion. Uh, let's go ahead and jump over to another website, give you guys another example of just load time, performance. Really, if you know what you're biting off here, then you're going to enjoy the experience because the Tegra 3 isn't going to disappoint you. The quality of the display won't either. Uh, some breaking news there on CNN. Not good news, of course, as usual. And, you know, the actual multimedia performance, uh, playing back movies, looks great. Uh, you know, it's just overall you're going to get uh, what you expect. Now, the price point, nonetheless, is too high. Uh, and I say that because, obviously, with something like the Nexus on the market now for $200, everyone expects every tablet to plummet. I don't think that's going to be happening this year, but I do think it is a matter of time before uh, everyone wakes up and realizes that, you know, the pricing structure originally established by Apple uh, was way inflated to begin with, and every Android tablet manufacturer pretty much has tried to follow that model except for a few budget manufacturers that have succeeded. And unless everyone tries to conform to that, you know, there is only so much room for a luxury tablet market, whether it's Apple, Android, or whatever else can come up down the road in the future. So if you respect what this 13-inch tablet represents, uh, then I think you're going to really enjoy it. Uh, the web browsing is great, as I mentioned before. It's just you know, a pleasure to use, drop back onto Engadget since it's a re relatively heavy site. It just works well. And as I mentioned before, if you're running Chrome, it's going to be butter. So, like what I see here, like I do on all of the Excite tablets, like I said, it mirrors the experience. Let's go ahead and take a look at some gaming, some real Tegra 3 uh, performance. I should still have it up right here. Heroes Call THD. And really, this is the idea. You know, you've got a 13-inch tablet. Why not be playing games on it? And since this does have Bluetooth, of course, beyond Wi-Fi connectivity, using a controller is really easy. Let's say you don't have your Bluetooth controller. Well, then go ahead and use a USB wired one because you also have that. Now, I don't want to spend my time playing games here when I'm trying to review for you guys, even though this one is pretty decent. And it happens to be free, let me add. Although, you know, how great it's going to come across in terms of me showing you guys here in the video is another story altogether. But it happens to be nice. And that's another area that this 13-inch tablet really excels. If you really are into gaming and leveraging the Tegra Zone and running all of the latest and greatest games for Android, then the 13-inch tablet sitting on the stand is really a console. And that's where it's extraordinarily unique. Uh, obviously, you can take something like a transformer, something with HDMI out, even the 10-inch version of this, and go ahead and output to you know your big screen. But a lot of people out there want to have the ability to do this in one place, 
and that's what this has to offer. You can go ahead and back out of this. So gaming, you just got a really good idea, at least from my perspective, that's one of the areas where a tablet like this shines. You've got your display. You don't need to output. There's no need for a secondary display to play on because really this is a full experience, no different than if you were carrying around a 13-inch laptop. So that's one of the, the you know the few areas where the large footprint really does shine, and the display is good. There's no question about it. Uh, like I said, it outclasses most, uh, if not all, Ultrabooks, at least from last year's generation. Of course, the latest generation, like the Samsung I'm reviewing for you guys, uh, it does have the same resolution as this in a 15-inch display. So, uh, and they are comparable. I'll say that. Uh, I'll give the edge to the Samsung display. It is a little bit better, and it should be. It's a lot. Uh, higher or pricier, more expensive item than this tablet, and also a much, uh, it, it's a computer, not comparable. Forget that it's an Ultrabook. So, uh, in terms of the actual ICS build that Toshiba puts on here, again, mirrored experience, everything is pretty much the same. You know, productivity suite, uh, pretty much stock. In fact, it looks a lot like Jelly Bean, at least this interface of the launcher uh, application, you know, being able to give you uh, a suite of software there just ready to launch up with uh, the touch of a single icon rather than having to go into your app drawer. So it's definitely a nice thing and I think that Toshiba, they know what they're doing here guys. I mean the, there's no question about it, Toshiba uh, is pushing the envelope, that's why they're the only one to manufacture a 13 inch tablet. Unfortunately I'm not sure how well this will be received. I think it's second life which will be when it goes on sale is when a lot of people will be snapping these up because as a home tablet something that you respect is not going to travel it could be in your kitchen like I said it could be next to your home computer your laptop uh, maybe you're getting this uh, it really is basically a home computer for uh, a kid because realistically a child could use this as a home computer in fact many adults could because as long as you're not going to do something like video editing this because of all of its ports from that full-size SD card slot to uh, you know for storage expansion and playback of all sorts of files to the USB host capability uh, HDMI out I mean what doesn't this tablet do and even the onboard sound is really you know very good so despite the negative reviews that are out there uh, I think that this tablet has gotten a bad rap the only really downside in my mind is the price point and that can be said for uh, Toshiba's 7.7 tablet as well even though that price point is a result of its Super AMOLED display uh, here you know yes it is a larger tablet but obviously all the internals are the same and even given its 1600 by 900 you know 13 inch panel I still would like to see this down at around the 550 range rather than the 650 range I mean I think they just came in too high and it'll be a lesson learned hopefully Toshiba keeps trying because if the Excite lineup that they launched this year is indicative of what's to come, things are only going to get better. And uh, again, build quality stellar, performance really good. Let's talk a little bit about battery life. Uh, you know, Toshiba rates this tablet at 13 hours. I'm going to say that realistically, you're looking at more around the 10 hour mark, but it depends what you're doing with it. You know, standby wise, this thing made it through a week like a champ with light use, but if I was using it every day as my dedicated tablet, there's no question after several days of use, it would be dead. Uh, will it compare to something like the Transformer Pad Infinity, Infinity with its dock, which will net you almost 15 hours? Uh, no, it's not going to, but you're not buying anything ancillary here. It's the batteries on board, and well, that's that. As far as software, I already got, uh, I believe, I, it was either one or two updates. I'm not sure what they addressed. Toshiba, you know, doesn't have the best reputation for updates, but I think that's going to change because you can't be aggressive in today's tablet market without being aggressive on updating software. Everyone knows that your entire experience is shaped by the software, and as long, if you allow that to become stale, users are going to leave you. That's part of the way, other than obviously the Transformer concept that ASUS has such a firm grip on the marketplace right now. Updates, updates, updates. Can't say enough about them. Uh, in terms, you've seen gaming, you've seen browsing. I've shown you guys the stock productivity. Talked about battery life and sound performance. You've seen the video quality. Let's talk about the camera performance. Not that that ever ranks high on my list because it doesn't because frankly I never use the cameras except for the front face occasionally front-facing one uh, on any tablets because after all I have cameras to use that's why I purchased those cameras but 
for uh, review purposes. The front facing cam, certainly acceptable, uh, better than most, I will say, out there front facing uh, in my experience with all the tablets. Uh, not better than the new uh, Transformer Pad Infinity, but better than most. Uh, the rear 5, mega, five megapixel camera, much like the one found on the 7.7, is just okay. You're not going to use it for anything. Uh, most people out there feel it's bad. I'm going to say it's okay because I really don't know who thinks any rear camera on any tablet is really good uh, or who really is focused on that feature. Uh, so, the cameras are functional, they do their job, are they fantastic? No, there are definitely better cameras on other tablets, but that obviously is not what's drawing you to this product. It's the 13-inch display, the experience of a more computer-like uh, interaction, especially with the touchscreen, which is the real appeal here, in my opinion, is that you're getting that all-in-one type feel uh, without having to buy, you know, one of those thousand dollar computers. Granted the 650 isn't so far away and that's why I keep mentioning the price is simply too high. So I think I've covered pretty much everything that you guys need to know about this tablet. I'll give you one more walk around on the actual um, you know build so you can take a look at that if you missed the unboxing because then you haven't seen the ports but I can't say enough about the you know having Bluetooth with something like this and being able to ha use a game controller or a keyboard or any accessory for that matter I mean even my Motorola smart controller works with this as a mouse I mean if I want to take a call on this from Skype or uh, you know or even over Gchat that thing is able to pick it up and take a call which is just crazy obviously I could use the onboard mics as well but this thing really does bridge the gap between uh, you know traditional tablets and computers in my opinion granted uh, we do need another level of computing power which will be in the next generation which I think will only suit a large format tablet like this even more so but the Tegra 3, in the, in the ability that it has on both gaming side, which is unmatched, as well as video playback, the fact that it can handle uh, 1080p playback, true 1080p, I mean, when I pop out that SD card for my NEX7 and throw it in here, and I can, you know, view images in their true resolution and, you know, playback video in its true resolution, almost at least, this doesn't have a 1080p display, but close to that, this is where the line really starts to blur. Of course, the Transformer Pad Infinity just breaks all the rules, which is why it's such a unique product. But let's go ahead and uh, go at you know look at the hardware as I mentioned before. So down at the bottom of the tablet, we've got our stereo speakers. No charging port here because unlike the uh, seven, 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 and the ten, this uses a traditional uh, power brick like a laptop would because the battery in here is pretty large, as you can imagine. The left side of the tablet, pretty clean. You've got your power button right there. And uh, I have to say, uh, no mispresses, but after all, I'm never really handling the tablet, as I mentioned to you guys before. You're not going to be holding this. It's not built to be hold. It's as simple as that. You've got your uh, lock orientation switch right there, which is certainly a nice thing. I mean, why wouldn't you want to have an orientation switch on a tablet of this size, especially? You know, uh, who wants to have to keep turning this thing around? Uh, the volume rocker, it does its job well. Uh, I believe that's a microphone, obviously, sh since it should be. It's aligned with uh, the camera, the front facing. Nothing else along the top. Now, as we come along to the right side, that's where things get interesting. You've got your headphone jack, your full-size SD card slot, as I was you know, bragging about before. You find all of these ports, by the way, and features on the 10-inch model as well. But the display on the 10, even though it's pretty good, there have been complaints about backlight bleed, things of that nature. By the way, Wi-Fi, GPS reception on this unit, uh, just the same as the performance in the Excite 10 and the 7.7, which is, you know, just about as good as it gets in terms of any tablet. Still not saying that justifies price point, but Toshiba did not cut any corners in any of those regards. Your uh, micro USB port, which obviously, as I mentioned before, can be used for a whole host of different things if you don't want to use Bluetooth. Uh, one thing to note about all of the Toshiba tablets, uh, it can only recognize, recognize FAT32 uh, formatted drive, so if you're using NTFS, it's not going to work out. Something that, uh, you know, manufacturers like Asus have gotten right, but uh, Toshiba for some reason hasn't. Hopefully, they'll address that in a software update. I'm not sure why uh, they haven't gone that route yet. And then, of course, micro HDMI out for that full 1080p output for watching movies if the 13-inch display isn't enough for you. 
which I think it is if you purchase this tablet. And then your power port right there for charging. I also want to point out charging time is lengthy, but that's to be expected with a tablet of this size with, with such a large battery. Of course, that brushed aluminum or mesh-like backing that I do happen to like. You know, it's not grippy. That's the one downside across the entire lineup of all of uh, the Excite tablets. Obviously, in this case, you're not going to be holding this, so it doesn't make any difference. But, uh, you know, it's still really well made, really solid, no flex on any of Toshiba's Excite branded tablets, so I like that. And there's that 5 megapixel camera with LED flash. So that pretty much rounds out the entire build. You guys have seen it all. Uh, I do really like it. Uh, the price is too high. Uh, I think even for those of you out there who have been waiting for something exactly like this, if you have a little bit of patience, there's no question, it's going to drop. Then again, the availability of the Excite 13 line has been almost non-existent. Uh, I was lucky enough to get my hands on one, uh, but they're pretty much out of stock everywhere. So I think Toshiba knows that they can't just roll these off the assembly line and hope that you know hope for the best. Uh, granted, Toshiba is cash cash rich at the moment, and that's why we've seen such a great offering from them this year. I have to say, if they didn't include this stand, I would wonder what they were thinking, but the fact that they did says it all. I hope I've answered most of your questions today. I tried to cover everything, you know, top to bottom. I do like the product. The price does have to come down, and really, Toshiba just continues to impress me with their entire Excite lineup, and hopefully they get pricing right. Uh, the next time around and as these tablets go on sale I think that's when they're going to become bargains you know around the holiday season I think that's when this is going to become very very popular as opposed to what it is right now and what it represents if you guys have any questions or comments please feel free to post them and of course as usual please feel free to subscribe later